Welcome into Double Overtime. Happy holidays for season one and 15 sixteenths. Season one and almost two, but not quite two. We're recording this right before the holidays, right before Christmas. Hope everyone has had has a happy holiday season. I'm Jenna Weiner. He's Sasha Vogel. Sasha, we're recording right before Christmas. Um, got any exciting plans? Family stuff, I assume? Uh, nothing super exciting. I'm going to my mom's tomorrow. Um, my mom is... Okay, so, backstory. My mom is German and, like, born and raised Germany. And Germans celebrate, like, they do their gifts and stuff on Christmas Eve. Okay. And so that's a thing that we do with my mom is that we just all go over there Christmas Eve and she does all the, we do all the gifts for the kids Christmas Eve and then do stockings on Christmas morning. So Very that's fun. what we're doing tomorrow. So we yeah. do presents a day early. <laughs> hey, it works. And then we I've... eat Chinese takeout. There you go. There you go. I have some similar things because uh, pretty much all my extended family <clears throat> Both my mom's side and my dad's side of family are uh, local to the San Francisco Bay Area or close to it. Um, so the next couple of days will be spent bouncing around to the different households. And my uh, partner's family is also in the Bay Area. So we'll be stopping by her parents' place at some point. So busy Christmas season, busy holiday season for everyone. Um, but there's still some still some ultimate stuff happening here and there. As we said, season one in a little bit because we're almost season two of the Western Ultimate League. We're so and close. And also PUL 2023 season. Uh, teams starting to post stuff about their tryouts. Even got a roster announcement from one of the Western Ultimate League teams. Sasha, where do we want to start? Uh, I think we should start probably with the biggest news with uh, Revo. Revo no longer being a part of the PUL. Yeah, Medellin Revolution Pro announcing, uh, I think last week as a time of recording or around that, um, that they are leaving the Premier Ultimate League. This is the team that uh, has won back-to-back -back titles, is undefeated in the Premier Ultimate League, and unless they come back, will remain undefeated in the Premier Ultimate League. Uh, reason being for their uh, stepping away from the Premier Ultimate League is uh, apparently there is a move to try and start a Latin American uh, professional league of some kind, which is super exciting. Um, wonder if Revo will stay as it is because it is so much of a presence. Um, feels like they would dominate if Revo stayed together, but potential for seeding other teams in Colombia. Could we see teams from other South American countries or from Central American countries? Like I could see a team out of Mexico or teams out of Mexico. Could be really cool to have that sort of connection between Central America and South America. Um, I think it'd be great. More, more pro leagues, more fun, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, I think also as I'm thinking about it, they never, they didn't announce like, what kind of league it is like we it could be a mixed pro league that's true it's true and so i you know we never know um but that is, it is exciting to have you know pro another pro league that's not part that's not in the u.s you know giving those other athletes in you know in latin america that time to be yeah i'm a pro athlete yeah yeah, and we'll, and we'll see how it develops, we'll see what other news we get out. Um, and momentarily, we thought that would drop the number of uh, PUL teams, but instead they announced that there would, would be an expansion team based out of Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Surge, joining up. Um, not too surprising of an addition. Philly, Pennsylvania, um, that whole scene, having a pretty active ultimate uh, community, um, both in the women's division, thinking of Pittsburgh Parcher, not based in Philly, but same state at least, uh, and Philadelphia Amp. Um, 
but you can probably expect, I, I feel like we can probably expect that uh, Surge is probably going to pull some players at least away from the other local teams, DC, New York, uh, some of potentially the Parch players who played with Columbus Pride. Um, and with Revel leaving, feels like it, things could be more open or maybe Raleigh Radiance is in there pretty pleased with themselves. Yeah, um, I think... You know, it was talked about in the in the old world Discord that it it kind of makes these other teams like having Philly come in makes these other teams weaker, which it kind of plays into the hands of of Raleigh now. Like Raleigh is the top dog. Like Raleigh's gonna be the one to beat. Um DC's not losing like a ton of people, I guess. Like there's not a lot a lot of Philly people in on the DC team, but there are enough that it does weaken the team a little bit with like Annalise Peters and Carolyn Normile, like some of the top top two that are on the DC team that could possibly be going to Philly. Because, you know, Annalise went to Pitt. I'm not entirely sure if she lives in Pennsylvania, but Carolyn I know lives in Philly. So like Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's certainly be going to be interesting, and it really packs the teams in um, in that sort of mid Atlantic area, uh, going from DC to Philly to New York. Um, definitely plenty of talent in the area. Also, I think it'll be interesting to see how much outside talent, if any, some of those teams start to pull. Um, if things are getting split, I mean. Some of like the Boston Brute Squad players have been split between Portland Rising and New York Gridlock. And again, the Parcha players might all go to Surge, might be split. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how those teams develop. And, and Philly does slot in directly into Revolution spot in the East Division. So at least that doesn't change the divisional alignments uh, as they are right now. Um, but again, if, if you're Raleigh, you're sitting there last year being like, we were one of the best teams. We just happened to draw Revolution in the semifinal. In, in what some folks considered, it's arguable, but could have been uh, the de facto final between Medellin and Raleigh. And now you're the top seed from last year. DC is very probably losing a couple of their top players to the new expansion team. And Raleigh is still sitting in the South Division, still going to be primed for probably rolling through that division like we saw last year and setting themselves up for uh, what they'll hope for is a strong championship weekend. Yeah, I'm, it's exciting to have a new, new team. I'm excited to see what talent this uh, Philly team will bring. And uh, I know that they're going to have, like the community is going to have their back. Um, you know, Pata is one of the biggest community frisbee communities in in the country. Honestly, probably in the world. And you know, the community is going to have their back. Community is going to like show up and support this team. That's exciting as well. Yeah, and Surge, we know, are playing tryouts and are, are signing up for what they hope will be a strong first season. And we've seen. All the other teams pretty much uh, across the league from last year posting on social media about having tryouts. He will season looking like it's going to start a little bit later than the Western Ultimate League season. We saw that in 2022. We can expect to see that as well. It seems like in 2023, because Sasha, we already have a roster drop from the Western Ultimate League already. It's not even 2023 yet, and we already have a 2023 roster. My hometown, San Francisco Falcons, on top of it, getting the roster out before the new year. Sasha, thoughts looking at this Falcons roster. Falcons notably not making it to the championship weekend in their inaugural season, despite some people thinking that that was one of the most talented rosters on paper last year. Um, well, I guess first we can talk about like kind of peek behind the curtain a little bit for the WL and that 
you know, rosters don't have to be sent to the league until January 9th. And so I feel like we're going to see a lot more rosters later on, like later on in January. And so this was a complete surprise from, from the Falcons. Like I was not, I don't think any of us were really expecting them to just drop a roster in December, you know, a month I, before. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I think some of us more local who knew tryouts were happening well, you. <laughs> uh, in, in November. And also um, it, I had the thought coming into this tryout season for the Western Ultimate League of would teams try and set their rosters early this time like they did last year ahead of the Winter Cup, but without the Winter Cup happening, would there be that same pressure? San Francisco opting to try and just get their ducks in a row early, try and get it done with. Um, other teams, I've, I've been hearing that uh, Seattle Tempest, for example, is basically going to pack their tryouts in right uh after the new year around the new year so some teams cutting it closer than others to the deadline um at least the deadline that we understand uh the western ultimate league has set for the teams um for their rosters to be set um from from a local perspective i'll say looking at the roster the the biggest change for me the, the most notable thing is the relative lack of players from Fury, uh, who once again made the club championship final this year, just losing out to Denver Molly Brown this time around, um, with Shayla Harris being the only real carryover uh, from last year's Fury cohort on the Falcons to this year. And instead, you actually see... Um, quite a few players from the top mixed teams in the Bay, Mischief, Polar Bears, and then, of course, uh, a decent contingent from Nightlock, as we've come to expect. Um, and I think one thing that we saw from San Francisco was maybe a lack of chemistry or cohesion. There was uh, not so much roster turnover, but a fair amount of roster unavailability at times, having to scrape together uh players to be able to get a uh, the number they needed to play against Seattle in Seattle, a number of players hit by COVID in the middle of the season. So certainly as a uh, local Bay Area person, as a, uh, at least by locality Falcons fan, I hope that the team is less affected by COVID this time around. And we'll see, maybe some having some of the players uh, coming from playing together more in the mixed division might help uh, the team gel a little bit ahead of the season. Uh, and maybe, maybe they might actually make championship weekend this time around and, and not just barely miss out as they did uh, last season in the last weekend of the season. Yeah. I think it's notable that of the 30 players that were on the roster last year, only 11 have returned this year that's, that's like a wild that's, number that's less than two lines that's that's like an o-line <laughs> you know <laughs> basically an o-line and some subs like that's a very low number they're bringing in 19 brand new people yeah and and again to be fair some of those players have a lot of experience with each other um in particular i was noting that there are quite a few mischief players uh from this past iteration of San Francisco mischief. Uh, again, one of the mixed teams in the area um, that are new to the Falcons, but will bring quite a bit of chemistry from playing together with mischief. Um, but still, I think on paper, certainly the relative lack of players from fury will make some folks wonder if the team will be uh, as talented on paper as it was last year. Uh, but that's not to say that this team can't still be very successful. The Bay Area Ultimate community continues to be absurdly deep and absurdly talented across the board. And so it would not shock me if the Falcons had a rebound year in their second season uh, and put together some better performances than they were able to muster last year. Yeah, hoping, you know, that it works for them, you know? That that's all I can really say. Like, hope, yeah. I hope I hope it works. Hope to see more uh, rosters from uh, other teams as well 
going into the new year. There's been, as we've mentioned in previous uh, shows, some announcements of starting sevens or core fours or those sorts of things. We got another uh, one of those insights from LA Astra recently with the uh, signing of 2021 Callahan winner Jasmine Childress. No surprise there uh, that that Childress has been signed by Astra, um, joining uh, a cohort of UC Santa Barbara grads on Astra, um, who also alongside San Francisco missed out on championship weekend last year. Was Astra the team that was playing that last weekend that it determined? It was Astra and Falcons, wasn't it? it and I was, it was I was on commentary for the game, in fact, uh, and losing my voice as I was <laughs> trying to keep the uh, viewers up to date on how that game was going to affect the uh, championship weekend outcome and how it happened to fall in such a particular range that the Arizona Sidewinders managed to just sneak in um i i think really for both of these teams the falcons roster drop early and astra uh signing children's to go along with uh you know their again their strong cohort of players out of la and coming off of uh the socal flip side season in club i think both will be really gunning for that uh, championship weekend spot this time around after coming so close uh, in that final weekend last year. And it, it might not be so easy this time because, you know, there's eight teams instead of seven teams. So you might have to do True. a little extra work there. And I don't know if the you know, point differential will, will matter at some point. It might. You know, it might. Know. It might. And, and we'll see what, sort of you know if there's any sort of different like structure like we write the pul and also the audl but they have AUDL has more t- audl has more teams pul 12 teams three divisions is it possible that we see something from the western ultimate league especially with the way that the teams are sort of grouped in a way um to have divisions could you potentially see a uh I'd call it maybe Northwest division. If you pull Seattle, Portland, Utah, and Colorado, and then you have the California and Arizona, AKA the classic Southwest division, um, Southwest region teams together, that could be a potential split. And if it's a sort of divisional format like that, then championship weekend might be as much uh, of how well you play against your division as it is against the rest of the league. But Schedule's not out yet. We'll see, we'll see how it it shakes out in terms of uh, how the different teams end up uh, facing off against each other and at what times. And also, will we see the return to the weekend tournament format that we saw last year that seemed to be fairly successful, although um, come 2023, is it going to have the same feeling of reducing travel costs? And again, if you have divisions, does that change things at all? I, Lots of questions surely will be answered in the new year. Yeah. From from what I know in little behind the scenes is that I'm fairly certain they are going to be having those mini tournament weekends, basically. Okay. How If they're going to be set up the exact same, I don't know. If they're going to have all the teams play in the little round robin, I don't know. But from what I know, they are going to be having them. I mean, it makes sense from a travel cost, right? And it makes sense in terms of trying to get fans out for a day or weekend. Um, I I think I think it's a decent format um, while still trying to maintain that sort of pro format of having teams only play one game a day at most. Um, I I think it's a a good balance Um, and be interesting to see in year two with another team uh, and potentially divisions. what that exactly looks like. Um, and again, PUL, we have even less information. Teams are just setting tryout dates now. So uh, we'll keep you up to date as we know more. Sasha, anything else before we sign off for 2022? Um, have a happy new year. <laughs> happy new year, everyone. Thank you for being with us in our first ever year first ever season and a little bit 
come 2023, I think Sasha, we should just call it season two. I think I think we're pretty much there. Next time we uh, we get on the mic together, we'll be officially in season two. Season two. I like it. New year, new us, <laughs> new season. Something like that. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> Happy New Year. Stay safe. Stay warm, everybody. Travel safe. And we will talk to y'all in 2023. Bye. Bye.